This video will teach you how to evaluate online sources using the CRAAP test. The internet allows us to communicate and share information with the world instantly. While technology has certainly advanced our society, it also comes with benefits and some detriments. The internet serves our society well by allowing us to share vital news, learn about old and new concepts, and connect with others around the world. But the internet can also be used for bad. This includes fake or false news, the sharing of harmful or extreme ideas, and sharing doctored images and videos posing as something true. These are all examples of misinformation, which stands for false or inaccurate information that is spread regardless of whether there is intent to mislead. This is something all adults must be aware of when using the internet. Whether you're researching for a class assignment, googling outside of the classroom, or using social media, you're bound to come across misinformation in the massive amount of information that is online. This is also unfortunately shared very easily through social media. So what can we do to stop the spread of misinformation online? How can we tell that the information we are finding online is true and unbiased? You can use something called the CRAAP test. This is a mnemonic device that can help you remember the different aspects of an online source to pay attention to and to take a closer look at. Let's look at each letter of the CRAAP test. C stands for currency. This relates to the timeliness of the information. You'll need to consider when the information was written or published, and how recent of information do you actually need. When you're researching a medical topic such as COVID-19, you'll want the most recent information. But if you're researching a historical topic, you will need to pay special attention to when your event occurred or when that person you are researching was alive. When evaluating a website, you can easily determine the currency of the source by looking for a publication date or looking for a last updated date at the very bottom of the web page. R stands for relevancy. This relates to how the information fits your needs. You'll need to consider what your assignment guidelines are, who is the intended audience of the information, and is the information at an appropriate level. The first A in CRAAP test stands for authority. This relates to the source of the information. You'll need to consider who the author is and what their credentials are, and who published the information. If you're not sure who the author is and what their credentials are, you can always Google the author's name to find out more information about them. The second A stands for accuracy. This relates to the reliability and veracity of the information. You'll need to consider if the information was supported by evidence, if the information has gone through peer review process, and if the language seems unbiased at all. Something you can do to check for accuracy in a source is looking for a reference list or a bibliography. And finally, the P in CRAAP test stands for purpose. This relates to the reason the information exists. You'll need to consider if the purpose of the information is to educate, to sell, to entertain, maybe to deceive. And you'll need to consider any political, cultural, ideological, religious, or personal biases that might exist in the information. One way you can find this online is by looking for an about page on the website where you found your information. So how can we remain mindful researchers when we are searching online? You can keep the crap test in mind. You can constantly fact check your information to make sure that it is true. When in doubt, you can use the library's databases. This is because the library's resources have been vetted by professionals. While anything you find on the internet, you will have to judge for yourself if that is true or not. And finally, you can always ask a librarian to check your sources with you.